discussing uh, graphing of trig functions, primarily uh, sine and cosine. Um, what you're looking at on the screen right now is simply a basic graph of sine. Okay, now sine has a couple of properties that we want to make sure that we, we recognize. Um, being able to graph sine of x is important. Um, there's a few things we have to remember. We have to remember where the sine graph begins. It begins at the origin. We have to remember that it has a, an amplitude of 1. Um, so we also remember that the x-intercepts are at, at the whole pi. Is really, so we have 0 pi, you have 1 pi, you can see here that's 3.14, and then of course you have delta here at 2 pi at 6.28. And of course it goes backwards as well. Um, sine is an odd function, so you can see as, as it goes back across the y-axis it kind of um, continues that pattern. Um, uh, we also want to look at cosine of x, the, the differences. If you look at the graph, I'm going to change it to cosine. Um, cosine begins at 1 at its maximum. It comes down um, through 1 half pi, that's 1.57, and then it goes down at its minimum halfway through its period, which is 1 pi, or 3.14. And of course, it goes back up through 3 halves pi, and it concludes back at its maximum at 6.28 or 2 pi. Now, these are just the basic principles, basic properties of sine and cosine. If you're going to be able to graph this um, by hand, it is absolutely critical that you be able to graph um, those important or critical points. Especially when we get into something a little more complicated, when we begin to change the amplitude, change the phase shift change the period, um, the vertical shift, whatever those things happen to be, if I can't graph sine and cosine of x, there's no way I'm going to be able to graph anything more complicated. Okay, so for example, um, if we look down at the bottom, we have a tab which is labeled A sine of kx plus c plus h. Okay, and if I just picked a, a particular example, this is 2 sine of 2x minus pi over 2 minus 3. And you can see the x-axis is up here. There's a negative shift um, in the vertical, um, in the, uh, I guess the vertical shift would be down 3. So you can see here the midline is now at negative 3. Um, the amplitude is 2, so from negative 3 we go up 2 units, and we go down 2 units. Um, finding the period and the phase shift is going to be something a little bit different. Um, you can see here that sine normally starts at its midline. If you go back and look at sine of x, it starts right at its midline, which in this case is 0, starts right at the origin. But when we look at this one, it starts at its minimum on its, x, or on its period. And so you can say, well, this looks kind of like the negative cosine. Okay, if you remember your co-functions, anytime I subtract or add pi over 2, um, it's going to do that. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to graph these um, functions by hand. And so what we look at here is we have the graph of 2 sine of 2x minus pi over 2, um, all that minus 3. You're missing a little division sign right there, but this is probably what it looks like. Okay, so what we're going to do first, uh, the, the important things is labeling your graph beginning with the midline. All right, so let me go down and select my, my tools. And so we're going to go down and we're going to label, I'm just going to draw a line at the midline. So negative 3, that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So if I draw a line right here, then this is now my, my midline. Okay, it used to be at 0, and now it's in here. So the whole point of graphing things like this is it's going to be based on the parent function. The original function that we were looking at just a minute ago, sine of x. If I can do this, then I can do what we're about to do here. Now, if you look at this, um, we want to be able to figure out our period and our phase shift. Okay. Um, first of all, let's look at our amplitude. We know that our maximum is going to be up at negative 1, and our minimum is going to be down at negative 5 because we have an amplitude of 2. So let's figure out our, our phase shift and our period 
and then we'll be able to graph it. Okay, so let's look at our work. So if we scroll down a little bit, now there's a few things that we have to calculate before we're able to graph sine of x or two sine x of 2x minus pi over 2 minus 3. As we said earlier, we need to know the amplitude, which is 2. That one's pretty basic. There's really no calculating for that one. Uh, we have to know the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. We've calculated the vertical shift, which is right here. We set it up um, at negative 3. We've calculated our maximum and our minimum based on the amplitude. Now let's look at a few other things. Our period is one thing we have to calculate. That's 2 pi over k. If I plug that in from our formula, we have 2 pi over 2. Look at it right here. We have 2 pi over uh, 2 to give me my period of pi. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is phase shift. Okay, We have our C here and our K here. If we plug that into the formula, it's negative C over K, so it's a positive pi over 2 divided by 2, which gives me pi over 4. Now, there's something else that um, is very helpful to graphing these things. When I want to change my or when I have a phase shift, I'm going to have to change my beginning points. So what happens is if you take the inside, whatever you're taking the sine of, in this case it's going to be 2x minus pi over 2, which is inside the parentheses right here, and I set that equal to the original end points of my, my period for sine of x, which is 0 and 2 pi. Okay, in order to do this, we just simply solve for x for each one. This gives me a pi over 4 for the beginning of my my period and at the end we solve this one and we get 5 pi over 4. Now when you do this you want to look at your period and double check to make sure that the distance from this x to this x is in fact your period. In this case we have a period of pi pi over 4 plus pi is 5 pi over 4. Another checkpoint go to your phase shift if you look at your phase shift minus pi over 4 in this case then our beginning point better be uh, either a positive or negative, depending on if it's going to the left or to the right. Um, they better match up because that's exactly, I started on zero, then if I add or subtract that phase shift, I better have the same thing. In this case, we have a, a phase shift of to the right pi over 4 units, which totally confirms that when I have it right here, pi over 4 to the right. All right. <clears throat> the next step is to go ahead and begin to graph these things. All right, so what we're going to do is we label our beginning and our end points, and we'll do that uh, with a few little shapes. Um, we'll make a little purple dots. Now, uh, pi over 4, um, we're going to assume that these increments here are in pi over 4 units. So this will be pi over 4, this will be half pi, 3 pi over 4, um, and then pi. So just to kind of give you an idea of what my divisions are, so just to make it easy. So our beginning point is going to be pi over 4, one point right there. Okay, And our end point would be 5 pi over 4. So this would be 1 pi, 2 pi, 3, 4, 4, 4 pi over 4, and then 5 pi over 4. That's my other point down there. Now, so if I were to simply just graph this without any kind of change and it would go up and then down and back up just like pi or just like sine would normally go. Okay, This is going to encompass one full period of sine. Okay, Now we look up at the top there's been no reflection so we know that this is going to start here it's going to go up and then back down and then back up. So what we want to do is we want to label those critical points just like we looked here we label the beginning, the maximum, the zero, the minimum, and then back at the zero again. So we're going to label that just like we did here. So we'll start here, okay, one quarter of the way through, which would be right here, we have our maximum, okay, halfway through, we have our zero, and then, oops, a little too big. Oh, that's not good. Okay, and so three-fourths of the way through we have our minimum again and if I were to draw a line right through there you can see how sine looks now uh, most of the time we're asked to graph two full periods of sine or cosine or whatever we're looking at okay well, let me adjust this to my full amplitude before I get crazy and make some stupid mistake 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to continue um, this process. So if, if I have a maximum here, zero, then it's going to go all the way back down here. So let me continue making my, um, my full period. And so this one will be here. And then the next one was going to go back. Uh, if we had it maximum here, zero, minimum, the next one is going to be back here. And then up at its maximum again, and then down at its zero again. Okay, now what we're going to do now is attempt to draw this with a mouse, which is ridiculously hard. So I apologize if it looks pretty bad, just like that. Yeah, that's way too hard for the mouse, but you get the point. Okay, sorry about the squiggly lines right there. Anyway. So what you see is you have sine, uh, or two sine at two sine of two x minus pi over two minus three. So let me go through that one more time. We found our midline, which is our vertical shift that was at negative three. The next step was to find the amplitude, which we drew in at the top and the bottom. That kind of gives us our our limits to how tall and how far down we're going to draw this thing. Um, the third thing we found was the period and the phase shift using our formulas um, here and here and it gives us pi and pi over 4 okay to kind of help us with our graphing we're going to take the beginning and the ending or find the beginning and the ending of our new period by going in and selecting the inside part of what I'm taking the sign of in this case it was 2 pi or 2x minus pi over 2 and then we're going to look at this where you have here we solved it for 0 now 0 and 2 pi are very significant for sine and cosine, these are going to be 0 and 2 pi because our original period began at 0 and ended at 2 pi. We solve for x for each one. We make sure that um, this confirms this information with our period and our phase shift. And once we do that, we plot our points. Remember, our critical points are the beginning and ending, the maximum, minimum, uh, and the zeros that the sine of x would go through. And then you have although very crudely drawn, um, you have what we were looking at earlier at this particular period. Now this one looks a bit squished because their scale is a little different than mine. So, But there you have it. And we have a very crude drawing of the sin, 2 sine of 2x minus pi over 2 minus 3.